Good evening. Welcome to Together Tuesday, our second one for this semester at Mass Bay Community College, sponsored by the Students of Color program. And tonight we're blessed and happy and excited to have our newly elected president of our S Student Government Association, Anthony Noop, uh, Noop? Neptune. Neptune, correcto, thank you. So, uh, great, President great. Neptune, congratulations yes. on uh, being elected as the SGA president. Would you share with us a little bit about yourself? For example, something about what, who you are, your background, why you came to Mass Bay, and any future plans you may have of plans for the SGA. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Dr. Moore, for inviting me. Uh, did you, I'm I'm blessed to be at Mass Bay. It's been quite a journey uh, to get here. Uh, I am. I had gone to college before. Um, it didn't really work out for me. I had a lot of um, personal things going on with my myself and my family at the time. I wasn't able to focus on school the way that I wanted to, and um, I ended up leaving. Um, I mean, there were blessings in that. I ended up, you know, working different types of jobs. Ended up working with youth at residential programs for children who um, had. Um, been the victims of severe abuse and neglect um, throughout their lives, and uh, it just changed my it changed my life. I had always had a passion for working with kids. I'd done volunteer work um, in after school programs um, when I was in high school and beyond. Uh, so, you know, it, it it was just it was great. And you know, it, the thing that really struck me is you know there with those children. You know, it, I, I respect teachers for teaching people how to read and write and all of those things. But with these children, you know, just how to just living and how to live and enjoy life was the opportunity that I was presented. Uh, and I was very fortunate, you know, as much as I hope that I affected their lives, I know that they definitely affected mine. So I, you know, pursued a career in the field um, and through, you know, hard work and some natural ability that I was blessed with. I was able to make a lot of um, have a lot of success and move up through the ranks. But eventually, you know, there was uh, a wall that, you know, I didn't see coming. I should have predicted. Um, but that wall was, you know, a barrier where I wasn't able to move up anymore in positions or be offered different jobs because of my degree or not my lack of a degree. And um, there were a couple of things that really triggered my wanting to go back to school. Uh, number one was, you know, uh, eventually it was like the fifth or sixth time of having to train someone who had all the letters behind their names. Okay. Um, <laughs> and were in positions above me or would be, I'd be reporting to. Um, then there was, uh, just being there was an, a, a training that I conducted and somebody uh, had asked me, um, you know, if I could, you know, help their organization or work for them. And they like ran through everything with me, but eventually it got to the point where I, you know, talked to them about my history and sent them information and they had to take back the offer because I did not have a degree. So, um, that's that smacked me in the face, you know, I needed to go back and, you know, there was a, a, some work I had to do on myself to let go of some of the things that I had felt before about my experience at school. But I was able to do that and Mass Bay has been has been a blessing because the teachers in Mass Bay have been so fantastic and encouraging to me um, since I've been here and. Uh, I mean, I, I'm an older student. I go to, so I'm working full time and going to school full time. So things are difficult, but, you know, I've been, my, the teachers have been transparent with me. I've been transparent with them and they're, 
their like passion and their desire for my for me to be successful, you know, has really been encouraging. There's been moments where I've been like, I don't know if I can do it or I want to do mm -hmm. it. But as much as I do it for me, there's this thing in my, the back of my head with the relationships I've built with the, some of this, with, I would say all of those, all of my teachers where it's been like, if I didn't show up to class or if I stopped and they found out, they would be very upset. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be at, for, to be at Mass Bay. So Great. We're glad, we're glad yeah. to have you here as well. Yeah. So it's been great. And, you know, with my experience so far, I've been, um, after my first semester, I really wanted to get involved with, you know, making changes at Mass Bay or just adding to the things that were already being done that were, were working well for me and others. So um, I wanted to look into getting involved with the SGA. Um, I couldn't my first semester uh, or in second or my first year, this is my second year now, uh, but the opportunity presented itself, scheduling matched up. And so, you know, I, I, I went for it and I felt like being the president with my background and, you know, leading and managing teams and supporting people in, in, the, in leadership roles would have worked really well. Um, and, you know, I was blessed and I got the position and I'm excited to work with the SGA, the current members. They are, you know, I've worked with a lot of teams and a lot of different groups of people. And, you know, it's not often that you get a, a combination of people with different gifts, but all have the same passion to want to make change and, and, you know, really believing what, in what they're doing. And everybody on that SGA that I've, that I've met uh, really wants to be there. There's nobody phoning it in or seeming uh -huh. to. Mm -hmm. to be doing it just to Great. do it. I'm really happy. Thank you, Mr. Neptune. Yeah. All right. I was glad glad to hear that and glad to hear about your background as, as well. So um so you're working all the time. So when do you have time to actually study? Um I mean you fit it in. You gotta I have to do what I have to do. So uh like I think there's I'm not the only person who's juggling a lot of things. I think community college especially is the place for people for a lot of people like me who have other things going on in their lives whether it be work or f other obligations that's where they can't just dedicate a hundred percent of their time to to work i mean to school work so um you just got to make it you just got to make it work put in effort but again i it's not just me my teachers have been really understanding um, mm -hmm. and, and worked with me. So I've and hard work plus, plus their, their thoughtfulness and I've been very successful. Great. So, so far this year, um, I know you just started with SGA. So what are some of the things that y'all might be planning around to get students engaged in activities and SGA uh, programs? Uh, that's great that you're asking because that has been, actually been the a topic that's been broached in every meeting I've had or attended so far. Uh, it's a really big focus of the SGA uh, on getting people involved and, and engaged. Um, and I'd like to share, you know, the reason why we want to have people more engaged, but then also what we're planning on doing or the convers some of the conversations we've been having. Uh, first off, the reason we want people to be engaged is because um, the, the school, Mass Bay, is run for us as students. And our best, or whatever it is that helps us to be successful, is ultimately going to help the school and the faculty itself. So even let's pretend, let's say that in the, the worst case scenario, Mass Bay faculty didn't care about us and they were only trying to make money off of us, our success and their ability to say, hey, these many people are like go on to pursue careers or go, or transfer to other schools, that success in and of itself would be a driving factor in their needing to listen to us and hear what we what what, what are we need to be successful and to make the changes or to continue to do the things that work for us. But the great thing about Mass Bay is that it's we don't even have to go there. 
the fact the fact is they want the faculty that I've met so far and the teachers, you know, have expressed countless times they want us to be successful just out of their own hearts and their desires to see students that they're teaching um, or students that they're working with, you know, achieve their goals and dreams. So in order to do that, they need to hear from us um, about what it is that we desire, things that are working well, things that aren't. And I think um, oftentimes I'm gonna be transparent that sometimes because students, we have so many things going on in our lives and we need to study and we have work to do um, outside of school um, as well. We tend to just go through the motions, get our work done and just move on. But we, as SGA, as an SGA uh, team, we wanna change that. We wanna reach out in ways where people feel like um they're really their voices are really valued and that the that that we will take what they're saying and really you know in try work to bring it to the powers that be and really create affect changes that are going to be good for for the whole student body now how we're going to go about that um there's a couple things first off one of the conversations that we're having is are we communicating in a way that is accessible to students in this day and age. I think, okay. you know, there's things like emails and, and all of that. And, you know, everybody should be reading their emails and all of that, but are there other ways to reach out um, that might be better? You know, there's talks right now that I'm hearing, you know, with school opening back up, there is an app that people can have from for MassPay. And could it be easier when there are things that we want to communicate or reach out that it could be, uh, a, a notification, a, no, a notification on the app that gets people to like really quickly, you know, give a little bit of feedback or share what they want to, what they need to say. And another thing is um, that is close to my heart, and I know close to the heart of other people on the SGA is: Are we hosting and having meetings at times that are accessible to everyone? at the, on the on the campus um and, and that is part of the student body i mentioned to you i really wanted to be a part of sga last year but because of my work schedule and my class schedule i was i didn't have any opportunity to make it work for me to to, to fit in so i think as an sga part of our responsibility is to figure out is there a way and it will be hard i'm not going to say we're going to it's a quick fix but is there a way that over the next semester, over the, the, the this next year that we can figure out to make like really important meetings or things where we want like more students involved, more accessible? Could we have more than one meeting where we give people information? Could we have several at different times where people who might work, you know, there are people who work in the day and only have time at night. There are people who work at, at, at um, in the second shift. I, for one, I work overnight. Right, so my 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 availability is going to be different. Everyone's availability is going to be different. So, I think those are the two biggest things. How do we communicate to people in a way that they're going to receive? And we have to, as a mass based community, change with the times. Right, are times changing? Is there are there better ways to communicate to people and together together gather their feedback? And then two, are we being inclusive and understanding to people who I think I believe, you know, and I would love to like research the numbers like our, you know, non-traditional students who might be working full time or have other obligations, are we reaching out to them and doing things in a way that is accessible for their schedules so that we can pull them in? Because I know when there's students I've met with and I told, hey, I'm part of the SGA, they're like, I didn't know I had time to do that. You fit it in, right? And that in and of itself is a failure where people don't think that they can do something, right? It's different if they don't want to. And I'd rather, and I think as an SGA, we should work towards getting in a, to being in a position where people have a choice about whether they can get involved that they don't think that they just can't be involved. Great, great. Thank you. Uh, another question I have for you. We have several sources for students to uh, receive funds, mm -hmm. maybe for, for expenses like the CARES group. We have scholarships. We have grants, and I, 
I don't feel like a lot of students actually partake of those or understand stand about those. And I know previous you were telling me that you actually took a, took advantage of some of those things. So what right. are some of the ways we can get students more involved or understanding what those those resources are? Um, so I think first off, I as much as we I'll talk about the responsibility of Mass Bay as an organization and the faculty, but I think sometimes we jump to just that and we don't take responsibility ourselves enough as students and how we affect each other. And you know, I, what I'm gonna say, I think I'm I'm speaking to myself as much as I'm speaking to anyone else. Um, I think as a student who has tapped into some of those resources, all of us who have who have done so, and and, and gained and been fortunate to to you know to have more access to fund funds to help us pursue our education, we have a responsibility to get the word out to our to our colleagues, you know, and our peers. And I think I, for one, you know, I've gotten scholarships and I've gotten, uh, uh, I applied for the CARES Act. And I think one of the things that really got in the way is honestly just ignorance and just and, um, misunderstanding about what is required. You know, so for scholarships, one, one, I think, you know, I was like, oh, it's not going to work for me. There's not like, there, there's not a lot of scholarships. Mm -hmm. You know, that is something that I had to really overcome, right, to understand that. And there are, I'll say this, there are a ton of scholarships. I, like, each time it comes up, I apply for, like, 10 scholarships um, because there are so many that you can have access to. So I think getting that word out, um, but also, like, for the CARES Act, I, like it's ridiculous, and I'm gonna be transparent. That, like at my own faulty thinking, like oh, it's gonna be this in depth thing where I don't have time to do it. I like I barely have time as it is. It was the quickest document. They basically asked me, "Do you need money?" I said yes, and they sent me money. Right? There's so much money that the, the out there that the government is trying to to help with us with, and there's donors, you know, that are trying to support students. So. I think as students, you know, especially as us as SGA, you know, we want to get that message out. And I think that's um, in opportunities like this, but also when we're in class, like spreading the message. There was a my like a class a couple of weeks ago where I just, you know, the teacher brought it up, you know, about people, you know, pursuing scholarships. And I mentioned that I applied for the CARES Act and I got scholarships. And I spoke to two other students afterwards who were like, they didn't think that they could do that, right? Or didn't know the process. And I shared that information with them. So I think we have an onus as students to, and a responsibility to make sure we spread that word. Next though is, is that, you know, I think the school as an institution, like um, emails, I don't think work. You know, just sending an email to people being like this scholarship, is available or did you apply for the CARES Act? I, that's 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 not gonna work. And some of the reason that I applied for those things is because my teacher, it was not because of the email, because teachers in the classes took time out of the class um, to say, hey, you need to look into this. Here's the link, go go check it out. Here, take the time, take a couple minutes and go look at it during class right now. And I think sometimes I don't want to speak for I can't speak for teachers, but I'm going to make an assumption because I know the time in class is valuable. Like they might think that it's not they don't have the time to do that. But five minutes, ten minutes, you know, over the course of an hour class, right? Some classes it's you know more time than that to have people look into some information. It would be great, and I I, I think there's that, but also. I think there needs to be some education done, for example, scholarships. I think there's a lot of anxiety around that, you know, on um, how do I write about myself? What do I write about? Um, what if I don't get it? And I think that those kind of anxieties can be dealt with if people are taught the skills that they need to be able to do those things. Um, I was fortunate to have a teacher, you know, who, you know, taught us a lot with, in English about writing you know, and writing well. And I think that 
really helped me when I was applying for the scholarships and um, and doing that. And shout out to her, Professor Teachin. And, you know, I learned a lot from her at Mass Bay and I was being able to have success. And I think the things that she taught me, are there, are, is there a way for those kind of things to be offered to students? And I hate to say this, but sometimes us as students, we don't know what's in our best interest. Is it wrong to maybe make some of those things mandatory, right? Like we're gonna do something where we're gonna show you here are the resources you can have and that we're expecting you to come and you need to come. We're talking about, you know, $3,000 from the CARES Act, that can change people's lives, right? For a semester, people who don't know how to, you know, if they can come to school full time or come to school at all, that's life changing. Because if you don't go to, if you don't take a full course load, that adds semesters or years to your time frame to get your education. So I think that might be time well spent. And if the school is taking it seriously, I wonder if there needs to be a concerted effort to really make it like, you know, mandatory to like understand and go through this process so that you can get the in, in, the information. Um, because we do other things mandate that are mandatory, some of which I'm going to say might not be as important as, you know, learning how to advocate for yourself through by applying for a scholarship or applying for different grants. Well, thank you, President. Okay, so uh, those are the questions I had for you. So let's just open it up and see if any of the people online, students might have a question for you. I'm just, oh. No, go ahead. go ahead, Rachel. Yeah, about um, what are some of the other like initiatives that are happening um, on the SGA? Like what are some of the other issues you're working on? Um, okay, so that's a great question. So I think one of the things that is really important to the SGA right now, I'm, I'll share two things, but the first one is, you know, we want to make sure that um, student feedback is, you know, is there's a process that is streamlined and it's easy to gather information about what's going on in the classroom. Um, there have been situations that have come up where it's like students like have some concerns or have some feedback and things that they want to address. But I'm going to admit it's not really entirely clear how you go about expressing some of those concerns and what channels and avenues that you have to do so. Um, I think um, and teachers might say, well, we have that information in the syllabus, right? But we just talked about information on the in the like you're not a good communicator unless the person you're communicating to understands what you're saying and hears it right so whether you did it or not if they don't get it you didn't communicate effectively so i think the key is you know that having it at the bottom of the syllabus you know after somebody's reading about the findings and the weight of the grades you think they're going to internalize that or they're going to be thinking about this final is worth 70% of my grade, oh my gosh, like, what am I gonna do, right? So I think there's better ways to communicate that. Um, and we have to really work with, you know, with the school, but I think the first step is gathering information from the students as to, you know, what would work well for them, you know, and in terms of learning about these things, but then working with the school to really understand what, how we can, make things more clear because I think it's really the the effect, the impact like that you um or the effect that your experience in a classroom can have on your like years going forward and your your education, your 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 view of yourself, um, your career, it's tremendous. So the we want any feedback that students have, any concerns that they have to be addressed um as soon as possible. Um, so that's a very big priority. Uh, the second thing is, you know, with um, groups that are like student and events that students are trying to coordinate, uh, just making it quick to like making the process smooth and seamless with as few hiccups as possible in order to like in getting funding for those. So um, that's one of the things that uh, several of us on the SGA are talking about. 
and we really want to figure out what are the processes, what needs to change, what can't change, right? Because we do have to respect that the school is, as an institution, there's some rules and regulations that they have to follow, right? But where are the tweaks and things that we can do to make sure that things are up and running? Because, you know, extracurriculars or different kind of things really, um, it's a large part of going to college. So uh, we, we really want to see that, um, that process be streamlined and, and run a lot more smooth. Great. Do we have any other questions for the president? Okay. Anthony, I'd like to thank you for coming and taking the time out and uh, updating us on SGA and also giving us an overview on how you got to Mass Bay and your process for your your journey and your, your plans for yourself and also for SGA. And our next Coming together Tuesday, together Tuesdays would be on uh, November the 9th, November 23rd, and December the 8th. And one of my goals would be to be sure that I get this link right and also to actually post this um, interview on our, web, on our website as, as well. So again, have a nice evening and good night. Thank you. Take care, everyone.